What's up, YouTube? It's Josh Palat, back again with another video. This time, we're going to be going over the top five ways the contraband gets smuggled into prison. Now, uh, I've never done the top five format before, but I get asked this a lot. And to be perfectly honest with you, there's five main ways that I have seen. And one of them only heard of or saw one time, but I'm sure it's more common than I would like to admit. So we're going to do the top five. We're just going to count it down. And I'm going to tell you guys how contraband gets into prison, because as you guys know, every jail, every transfer facility, every single prison, everywhere that I slept, I think it was 12 different places during my time of incarceration. Every single one of them had drugs, if you were willing to pay the price. So let's get into it in no particular order. Number five orifices. I think you guys know what I mean when I say orifices. So despite the fact that we all know the main orifice that I'm talking about, another popular one is through the visitation room, uh, which involves family members that are willing to uh, commit felonies and federal crimes by bringing you drugs to prison. Um, one of the popular ways that I've heard about is a woman comes to visit you in the visitation room where they're very, very closely monitoring you. Of course, there's cameras everywhere. They're watching you very closely. And um, if you have a beautiful wife, of course, they're very, very mad about you even holding hands. You're not supposed to, technically. But if it's an ugly girl, they let you make out. Anyways, I digress. Um, oftentimes, a woman will put drugs or a package of some sort inside one of her orifices and will go to the bathroom where they are not monitored, at which point they will withdraw said drugs or package. Uh, they will then come back out, keeping it covertly in their sleeve or in their hand, sit down and with one of the vending machine bags of chips, they'll pretend like they're eating chips or maybe they I'm sure they will eat some chips and they will drop the package into the bag of chips, at which point an inmate will then empty the bag into his mouth. You follow me here, swallow it, go back to the unit, throw it up, or they can just wait for it to pass, which means it goes back to the main orifice. Another way that orifices are used to transmit or smuggle drugs uh, other than visitation is through transferring from other jails or prisons to where they are, or even guys that are lucky enough to be able to self-submit to prison on a certain day if they had a lower security type crime. So um, somebody that you know is ordered to report to a certain federal prison at this time and date will probably come in with their entire lower intestine slammed full of Xanax bars, cocaine, and weed if they want to have a very, very nice financial start to their sentence. This also includes coming from other centers, like I said, um, I've seen people that were at a jail or prison that was flooded with tobacco and they bought as much as they could before they transferred out, stuffed it on in there, and they come to the new prison that might not have much tobacco and they're sitting on a gold mine. Literally sitting on a gold mine. Number four, and this is probably the single most popular way, is crooked COs. Um, I've never broached the subject of will you bring me drugs with a corrections officer. Uh, you can get time added to your sentence just for saying those words. But we all know that the, one of the main ways that drugs get into prison is through crooked guards. Their bags aren't checked um, or they check them themselves. My mom actually witnessed a guard at Talladega, Alabama one time coming into work, put his own backpack on the scanner, watched it go through the scanner, walked around, picked it up and kept going. Like, I, uh, I doubt there's any photo evidence of what was inside, you know. And maybe that guy wasn't crooked, but it just kind of goes to show you that they're trusted. They can bring in anything that they want with no issue whatsoever. Um, the, when I went back on my violation for another year, whenever I failed a drug test for marijuana and alcohol, I went back for another year to a low security prison this time. Drugs, particularly meth, were so plentiful and so overrun by crooked guards that it was almost street price inside of the prison. That being said, that prison was by far the most corrupt, twisted, demented place that I've ever served time. And I would much rather be back at the medium high securities than ever have to do time at a low security again. That place was Lord of the Flies, a giant open room with 130 men in it. And you can actually search um, that that prison that I was at, Forest City Low Security of uh, Arkansas, actually had a coronavirus pandemic where the guards basically abandoned the entire unit. And there's horrible, horrible cell phone videos um, because of all the cell phones in there from the crooked guards, people were able to send out videos to the street. So guards is a, probably the single most common way that illicit substances get into federal prisons. Number three, drones. Now I had heard talk of this during my first sentence, but it was, when, it was whenever I went back on violation that it actually was a viable thing that I know for a fact was happening. Uh, they're actually starting to put nets over federal prisons to prevent this from happening. But drones were carrying in drugs, um, t-shirts even. There's market for everything that you can't get in there. So black tank tops were very popular at the low security prison that I was at. They're very expensive and guards could technically take them away from you because it was obvious that they weren't sold in the commissary and there's nowhere else you could have gotten it. Um, in particular, I actually know of a guy that never discussed it with me or anything, but I mean, word spreads in prison that was bringing in drones with uh, cell phones, those black tank tops that I was talking about, copious, copious amounts of K2 spice laid on paper to make it very hard to detect, very easy to smoke. Um, 
pretty much every contraband you could imagine. Um, AirPods, all kinds of nonsense that was coming in, like uh, you know, Bluetooth headphones and, and just all kinds of stuff that was illicit and sold for several hundred dollars, if not thousands of dollars in the case of cell phones. And drones were a very viable method for bringing these things in. People would fly them from very far away, drop it off at a preset location and coordinates, and the inmate would go out to the rec yard or wherever it was where the drone had dropped off the supplies and collect them. Uh, extremely, extremely profitable industry for those people, but I'm pretty sure that all the guys that I know of got indicted. Number two, throwing stuff. Uh, I actually have a funny story about this. Whenever I was at the Federal Correctional Institute of Talladega, Alabama, which was a medium high security, um, it was pretty common knowledge that people would just basically pull up to the outside of the prison, which is heavily under guard. So I guess they did it during the midnight hours, you know, and tried to dodge the uh, truck going around. I wouldn't be surprised if they parked like a half a mile away and then snuck through the darkness to the prison. But they would uh, throw, you know, handballs or um, even paper bags at times, just go up and try to throw them over both of the gates because medium high securities have two levels of razor, razor wire. There's a huge gate right here with a ton of razor wire over it, then a ton of razor wire on the ground in between it, and then a second gate slightly lower with a ton of razor wire on it. So it was actually double layered at a medium high security. And they would clear both of those. The inmate would know the time and know the general location of it. They would go out there the next morning as soon as the first rec yard opened, uh, was called, and they would go out there and retrieve the goods. Now, a funny story about that is that one time our entire day got ruined, or like two days actually, they shut the entire prison down because somebody thought it would be a good idea to throw a tennis ball loaded with drugs out onto the rec yard. Now, if you're wondering why that sounds so stupid, tennis is not a thing in federal prison. Now, they have racquetballs that you can play handball with that they sell on the commissary. That would have been a much better idea. But a bright neon green, neon yellow ass spotted from a mile away designed to be highly visible tennis ball that has no reason to be in a federal prison. Needless to say, as soon as the sun came up, a guard spotted it. They locked the entire prison down, recovered the tennis ball, and nobody was allowed to go outside for like two or three days. That was a dumb move, bro. A tennis ball? I mean, I guess the dude was just trying to take it out, he could get it. Last but not least, we have number one. This was not in any particular order, but I saved the funny one for last, or I guess kind of the morbid one, honestly. Maybe the funny one was the last one, but um, babies. Yeah, so when I was at Talladega one time, um, apparently somebody convinced a woman that if you wrapped a cell phone in tin foil, that it would not set off the metal detectors when you're entering a prison. You're gonna wrap some metal around a chunk of metal to make it not go off on a metal detector? So as the events transpire, we come to find out that this person had actually, this woman had wrapped a cell phone heavily in tin foil and then tucked it underneath a baby's diaper, inside of a baby's diaper, I guess like in between, you know, like their private area and the diaper itself, thinking that there was no way that that would ever be checked. Unfortunately for you, um, all of your belongings and persons are subject to search for any suspicion in federal prison. So needless to say, they put this baby through the metal detector, it popped off, and I'm sure she had to change the baby's diaper right there in front of them. And from what I was told, the lady was charged to the fullest extent of the law, and I would not be surprised if CPS took her child away for using her child to commit felonies, especially federal crimes, because smuggling things into a federal prison is a federal crime, much like committing any crime whatsoever on a federal Native American reserve is, again, a federal crime. So... Pretty sure that she, her kids were taken away. I'm not sure if it was the child of the actual inmate. I have no idea as to that. I doubt it since he was in prison and I believe that this was like a one-year-old child. Normally the process of being in jail, getting sentenced and going to prison takes you longer than a year just to start off with. So, I mean, if you give nine months gestation time, I guess it's possible, but I'm not sure whose baby it was as far as the inmate is concerned. But um, a woman tried to smuggle a cell phone wrapped in tinfoil in a baby's diaper into a federal prison. Now, that being said, that's the only instance I've ever heard of that happening, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's a common tactic that um, just goes under the radar to a certain extent. I mean, what are you going to do? Demand that every baby that comes in takes off their diaper? You're definitely going to wind up in prison yourself if you're trying to pull a heist like that. So uh, I would imagine that that's probably a way that things are brought in, and I just was unaware of it up until that point. So by my reckoning, that would be the top five ways the contraband gets into a prison and why inmates all get completely addicted and strung out on drugs while they're actually serving a term of incarceration, which uh, does nothing for addicts. They get no rehabilitation whatsoever from it. Um, if anything, they run up huge bills and they start breaking their back trying to hustle, you know, washing clothes and doing laundry and stuff like that, or, uh, you know, any way that they can to make ends meet to keep their drug habit going. Then when they're released from prison, a lot of times they have a worse habit than they had when they went in because drugs in prisons are flooded. Drugs in prison are just, I mean, they go together like lamb and tuna fish or spaghetti and meatballs. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say that the guards are the number one way um, 
and visitation room slash orifices would be the number two way. I'm not personally sure though. I was never involved in anything shady like that. I just heard through the grapevine and uh, kept it under my hat, you know? <laughs> so uh, anyways, hope everybody's staying safe. Hope you guys are staying free, staying healthy, washing your hands, wearing your masks. Uh, it's dangerous out there right now. Hope everybody's huddled down with their family and taking it easy right now. Things are going great on Twitch. I just did a Twitch stream with my wife. It was a lot of fun. I played Animal Crossing. She played RuneScape. She made a hardcore Iron Man and she died, you know, about two hours in. She did pretty good, but that stronghold of security is a mofo. The Twitch is down below, guys. The Discord is down below. I'm looking for Overwatch players right now. So if you play Overwatch and you want a game, join the Discord. Send me a private message in Discord, whatever you want to do, and let me know that you play Overwatch. We're trying to get people to make more consistent six stacks. My RuneScape name is Hardcore Iron Man Felon. I also play my main account, the RS Felon. Feel free to shoot me an ad. I'll leave my private chat on. We got the Instagram down below. We got the whole works, guys. So please uh, leave a like if you like this video. If you didn't like it, please leave a like. It's right there, guys. It's free. You can click subscribe. You can click thumbs up. You don't have to pay anything. It's not like Twitch where subscription costs money. Come hang out on the Twitch streams, guys. I love all of you. Thank you very, very much for tuning in for this week's Monday upload. And I'll probably have a Tales from the Jungle for you next week. So stay safe. Stay free. Stay healthy. I love y'all, man. All the links down below. Have a beautiful week. I'll see you on Monday.